All righty. This is probably the last one for today, and then I'll finish up next time. But uh, this is a nice heart because you can see a lot of the branches off the aorta, especially, and it's got nice big coronary arteries. So let's do a little review. We've talked about all these structures already. Left auricle, right auricle, pulmonary trunk, left pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery is going to go under the arch and come out behind. On the surface of the heart, you can see the anterior and ventricular artery and the great cardiac vein. You can see marginal artery and small cardiac vein running together. We open these guys up. We can see our right ventricle with our pulmonary semilunar valve, left ventricle, um, aortic semilunar valve is way back there. It's got the number 45 on it. This is our tricuspid, I mean our bicuspid valve in the left ventricle, tricuspid valve in the right. You've got chordae tendinae there and here, attached to the papillary muscles. Let's see those. Here's your left atrium and notice the superior and inferior left pulmonary veins coming in. This is your right atrium and you can see your fossa oval right there, number 55, superior vena cava dumping in there, inferior vena cava and the opening for your coronary sinus. You can also see your crista terminalis here. <laughs> Actually, I think that's supposed to be number 53 on this one. Because here's your pectinate muscles and here's your smooth. So 53 is your crista terminalis, 52 is your pectinate muscles. Superior vena cava, remember your left brachiocephalic vein and your right brachiocephalic vein are both going to dump together into the superior vena cava. Here's your ascending aorta. You can even see the entrance, the very branch of your um, right coronary artery right there coming off your ascending aorta. You can ignore these things. These are like bypass vessels, but so here's your right coronary artery continuing down to where it's going to give off marginal. Here's your aortic arch. Notice your one, two, three branches. Brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery. Remember, brachiocephalic artery is going to branch into two major branches, right common carotid artery and right subclavian. So by the time you get to the neck and the arm, you've got a subclavian on either side and a common carotid on either side. These two just happen to come off of a common trunk. And then you have your descending aorta here. This little orange structure here is a connection between your pulmonary trunk and your aortic arch. This is called your ligamentum arteriosum. It used to be a vessel when you were in utero to provide for an, um, some bypass circulation around the lungs. And again, you can see your left pulmonary artery and your left pulmonary veins. We turn this over. You can see your descending aorta well. Left atrium, right atrium, inferior vena cava, bringing blood in. You can see your coronary sinus here. You can see your posterior interventricular artery, middle cardiac vein. Here's your small cardiac vein coming around to dump into the coronary sinus. This would be circumflex artery. Let's see if we can find the origin for that one. Yep, so you can see the origin of your left coronary right here as it comes out of the aorta, and then it's going to split into circumflex, which will go all the way around, and anterior interventricular artery. And then, of course, again, great cardiac vein coming all the way around and entering your coronary sinus with your middle cardiac vein and small cardiac vein. I think that pretty much does it. I have one more heart that I want to do a big presentation on, so that will be on the next video.
All right. Happy okay. Studying. I did want to say a couple of things about there's a couple of things that I missed that I just wanted to touch on in this first one. You have your atrioventricular sulcus and your atrioventricular septum as well as your interventricular sulcus and interventricular septum on your list. And I just wanted to tell you what those were. The sulcus is the space where the vessels lay, basically. The septum is the muscle part. So atrioventricular sulcus is going to be the space between the atrium and the ventricles. The interventricular sulcus would be the space between the ventricles. So really, these vessels, interventricular vessels, are going to lie in the interventricular sulcus. So this would be your anterior interventricular sulcus, posterior interventricular sulcus. So it's just this little depression between the chambers of the heart. On the real heart, you can actually see these depressions because there's a, the layer covers the depression. On the models, it's a little hard to appreciate. And then your atrioventricular sulcus would be this space where these vessels are lying. Atrium ventricle, atrioventricular sulcus. The septum, the interventricular septum, which I think is the one you have to know, is this part. This band, thick band of muscles between the two ventricles. So this would be your interventricular septum. Yes, it's myocardium, but specifically this is the interventricular septum because it's between the two ventricles. Okay, I think that's it.